the Dodge Challenger Demon is supercharged. The Nissan GTR is turbocharged. Why? What's the difference? I mean, why did Dodge choose a supercharger for their flagship tarmac slaying V8? But when Nissan wanted to dominate the racing world and created Godzilla, they chose the humble turbo instead. Are turbos better than superchargers? Well, today we're gonna find out. This is Ideal Cars, this is Trav, and today we're getting boosted. Not that kind. Let's get into it. Okay, so first off, I wanna clear up some verbiage. NA, no, not like the Miata, stands for naturally aspirated, which just means you have an engine that breathes all on its own. And aspiration is just a fancy word for breathing. Now in normal land, to make more power, you need more air. And to get more air, well, you just build a bigger displacement engine. Makes sense, right? More volume, more air can go in. And there is no replacement for displacement, right? Wrong. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. See, both the turbocharger and the supercharger are really, in fact, displacement modifiers. And if you add a displacement modifier, like say a turbo or a supercharger, you're really adding forced induction, AKA forcing more air into the engine without having to make the engine bigger. And that's not natural. So why would you wanna do that? Well, basically because most engines are air limited. Stoichiometry tells us that you want 14.7 parts air to one part of fuel. So every time you add one molecule of fuel, you also need to add about 15 molecules of air. And as you can imagine, it's pretty easy to shove more fuel into an engine, but it's actually super hard to shove 15 times that amount of air. And side note for you super nerds, yes, the correct way to measure all this is actually in moles, but this is ideal, not your snooze fest AP science class. Enter the supercharger and the turbocharger, which we call turbos to make it easy. See, those are really just air compressors, which is why we often call them compressors. Hey, I love it when things actually make sense. By compressing the air, we can squeeze way more of it into the engine. And that means more fuel, and that means more boom. Where they differ is in how they actually go about compressing the air. We're gonna keep this simple because, <laughs> whoo boy, it's quite the rabbit hole with no end once you start looking at the different types in each category. Basically, a supercharger uses mechanical energy to compress the air. And that's to say, your engine's spinning, so you rob some of that spinny power to run the compressor. Usually, it's done with a belt that comes off the harmonic balancer or a crank pulley just like the alternator and other accessories. A turbo, <laughs> well, a turbo is a little different. See, while a supercharger takes energy from the crankshaft of the engine to do its job, a turbocharger uses the velocity and heat energy from the exhaust that's already screaming down the exhaust pipe. We call that boost. Can you guess what comes next? That's right, it's a pros and cons list. Everyone loves a good list. Superchargers are pretty neat because they make boost instantly. It's run mechanically off the engine, so if the engine's running, it's running too. If you find yourself, say, drag racing, you want the instant response when you press on the skinny pedal. The downside is, is that you have to rob some engine power to make that power. And if you aren't careful, you could, theoretically, end up in a scenario where your engine can't actually power the supercharger. And it's really insane, like the roots blower bolted to the top of a top fuel car needs somewhere in the neighborhood of 900 horsepower just to run. You basically need an entire Veyron just to move the supercharger on a top fuel car. And the 2.7 liter unit strapped to the Demon, well it saps more power than an entire Miata just to get its blades turning. And once they are, it would starve the entire cabin of the car of air in just 800 feet on a drag strip. Yeah, luckily it breathes from outside the cockpit instead. But so what? Nothing in this world is free, right? Well, except subscribing to our YouTube channel, so do us a favor and go ahead and get that done now. Don't worry, it won't hurt. If 
only there was a way to take some waste product of the engine and turn that into power instead of robbing power from the crankshaft, right? Well, good news, that's where turbos come in. Now, don't get me wrong, turbos do have one or two major drawbacks. See, they take time to spool up and start compressing the air. And the bigger the turbo, the longer it takes. There are ways to offset it, sure. Like Toyota, for instance, is a huge fan of using a little turbo that basically powers a bigger turbo. So that the turbo lag is nearly eliminated. But mostly, if you want power from a turbo, you're gonna have to wait for it. Wait for it. However, they are way more efficient. Since they work by scavenging escaping exhaust, that would otherwise just be completely wasted, well, you're basically getting free energy. But they're also more complicated. And that's pretty much the biggest downside. See, turbos need space and a bunch of tubing since the exhaust and the intake have to be connected to it and they need oil pressure and return lines and a way to get rid of boost when they don't need it through diverter valve or blow off valve, which are the things that make the cool turbo noises. Yeah. <laughs> and you're rerouting the air intake, so you'll probably need to figure that out. There's just a lot more work involved getting them up and running compared to bolting a supercharger on and hooking a belt to it. So to sum it up, superchargers are easier to install, but can only make a limited amount of boost and rob power from the engine. Turbos, on the other hand, turn waste energy into power, but are definitely more complicated. The efficiency is really the key here. A big engine that already makes a ton of power doesn't suffer as much from the power robbed by the supercharger, whereas a smaller engine is gonna feel that a lot more and benefits a lot more from the efficiency of a turbo. You know, like a Hellcat engine is big and powerful already. So it's easy and sort of makes sense to supercharge it. But something like the RB26 in a GTR isn't super powerful on its own. So it really benefits from a turbocharger or two. But if we had to choose one, which is better? Truth is, it's just way easier to make a ton of power with a turbo. Superchargers just have a bunch of limitations. First, you couldn't just bolt up a Hellcat supercharger to your Civic. There's literally no room. And your pitiful little B16 doesn't make enough power to turn the pulley. So you'd have to source an itty bitty supercharger, but then you're making way less boost than an equivalent turbo. Sorry guys, from a practical standpoint, the turbo is a better way to make power. They're just more efficient, which is one of the reasons it's really easy to find turbocharged cars pretty much everywhere these days. Ford, Honda, even frickin' Kia is strapping small turbos onto all their cars so that you can get some extra power without having to burn a ton of the extra fuel required for a bigger engine. So, why do some companies like Dodge and Chevy still go with the supercharger? Mostly because that allows their car to behave how people expect. Remember, a supercharger makes instant power. That means if you do go drag racing, you can launch off the line like no one's business. And if you have a large displacement engine already, you really aren't gonna be suffering from a lack of power down the track either. In the old days, you didn't even find turbos on big engines. With the larger displacement, it didn't much matter if you robbed some power to run the supercharger. The efficiency just didn't factor into it. In fact, a lot of dragsters are still that way. They make so much power that You've left the realm of efficiency long ago. But that's changing too. As technology offsets the limitations of the turbo, if you can build the revs and spool a turbo, you know, like you have launch control, then you're building boost right off the line too. But basically, to drive home the answer to the first question we asked, if you already make a bunch of power, a supercharger is an easy, fast way to add even more power which is why cars like the Challenger and the Mustang are perfect candidates for a supercharger. Now, if you don't have an engine that already makes a ton of power, just like Squid's Delica, that super high efficiency of a turbo is gonna take you a lot further, which is why Group B cars limited to a two liter engine and Godzilla, which had a relatively small inline six, were turbocharged. Now, we haven't really talked about what you should think about buying if you're thinking about adding forced induction to your car. And I hate to break it to you, but that's because you probably don't have much of a choice. Like I said before, superchargers aren't very common anymore, and since most companies choose the turbo, 
That means if you wanna say add fourth induction to your new Mark V Supra, well, you're gonna be using a turbocharger simply because no one makes a supercharger for it. And if you do have a choice, you have a car that you probably already know everything about. And you don't need some goon on the internet telling you what's better for you to do. Just remember to get oil moving around before firing up the car on its, on its first run. And that's it. Hey, watch us on TikTok at Ideal Media, check out the ideal.media blog, and stay safe out there, people. This is Trav. Thanks for watching this episode of Launch Control. I'll see you guys next week.